Welcome! If you're new here, my name is Cynthia. I'm a visual artist. I'm sometimes here with my boyfriend David. He's a musician. If you're a creative person, please subscribe. You might really enjoy what we do here. Not very long ago, I made a three minute video showing you three blending techniques for oil pastels. If you haven't seen it, it's a really good one. It's short and there's good tips in there. So I'll link it at the end for you to see. In that video, I created some landscapes to show you my blending techniques. But today I want to share with you my recipe to recreate those super easy landscapes. You can literally have one done in five minutes with only three colors and your imagination. It's super fun and they come out really beautifully considering that you spend maybe five or ten minutes on them. It's pretty impressive, but it's accessible to anyone. I'll be showing you two landscapes in real time. Let's do it. The first thing I do is take the border of my drawing because I think it gives a really nice professional finish. I use painter's tape so that it doesn't damage the paper once I take it out. And then you're gonna pick three colors. A color for the sky, a color for the land, any color you want. The land can be red and the sky can be purple if you want to. And a dark color for the horizon line. Only three colors. Then you decide where your horizon line will be. You can put it right in the middle, you can put it at the very bottom to have more sky or very high. I decided to put mine quite in the middle. The colors I picked is ochre for the ground, the land, and a light blue for the sky. Pretty standard for this one. And what I do is I use the side of the, of the oil pastel to put some pigment down instead of the pointy bit and I try not to saturate the paper with too much pigment at first. I said this a million times in so many tutorials but it's important to repeat it. I do the same for the sky and the important thing for the sky is to start more saturated at the very top and leave it to a very light gradient towards the horizon line so that it becomes almost white when, when it touches the horizon. You can even have just a small border of color at the top and the rest is a very light shade of the color you chose. It's really up to you. And then I go in and I start blending. I'm using a blending stump right now. It's a very handy tool. It costs only a dollar or so on Amazon or at any art supply store, but you don't have to use that. You can use your fingers, you can use a rag. Here I decided to use my finger just to show you that it's also doable. It takes a little bit more effort, but it's doable. When you use your finger, you might need to put more pigment down. It makes it easier to blend. Or you can use a lighter shade of the color you're using or a white to help blend everything together. Then you're gonna draw the horizon line. You basically draw some tree lines. You use squiggly lines to just suggest the trees or it could be a mountain, it could be some rocks or even like a cityscape skyline with the buildings you decide whatever you want. I chose to put some trees down. That's what the Impressionism movement is all about, just suggesting with little strokes and different texture, halfway between abstraction and realism. That's what I love about it. You can put as much detail as you want or leave it very bare and simple. I go back in with a blend in, blending stump to kind of blend in certain spaces until I'm satisfied with the outcome. If you wanted to, you could also have put just a straight line for the horizon with a black or a dark color. Instead of doing the tree line, you can really have fun experimenting with different things. The best part for me is to let my imagination flow and be lost in the moment and it becomes very relaxing to just put pigment on the paper without having the pressure to render something very realistically. It's just like a relaxing moment 
to free your mind. So that's how I treat it. And the great thing about it is that you made it. There's nothing else like it in the world because it's from your imagination and it can be done super quickly whenever you have a few moments. And then you take off the tape. It's my favorite part. It's so satisfying. Just have to be careful not to rip the paper, but it should go pretty well. I think those clean edges give the piece such a nice finish. I always do this. For the second piece, I decided to cheat a little bit. I said you could do it with only three colors. I used a bunch of different colors, but not that many colors. I kept in the same tone of yellow, beige, ochre, and browns. And I also used a white to blend. You'll see that later. Now I'm using some yellow for the sky. You see, you can put the sky any color. You can put it red, you can put it green if you want to. I decided to go yellow. A good thing to remember in drawing the land and the sky is to put the most vivid and saturated colors at the very bottom for the land because it makes things look closer to you. And as you go towards the middle, meaning farther in the picture world, you make the colors more muted and lighter. It will give the effect of depth and things going far out in the horizon. It's the same thing with the sky. You can start with the more saturated pigmented color at the very top and fade it out to white towards the horizon. Here I'm using the white to blend everything together. White is a very, very good tool to use if you don't mind the colors getting lighter because it will lighten whatever colors you put down, but it's such a dream to blend to a creamy finish. I use that technique all the time and I talk about it in my blending techniques. Obviously, you don't have to put as much as I did right now. You can put just a little bit of white or you can go back after to add more of the original pigment as you'll see that I'll do later on. So I'm using white for the land and for the sky and I'm using more of that beige and more of the browns to bring back that color in the land and to create some texture and some depth. Now time for the horizon line. Again, I will do some trees, but you could do a mountain or some rocks, like to have the shape be just a line also if you wanted to. If you want to have it more like rocks or mountains, instead of using squiggly lines, you would do more of a rounded shape, an even rounder shape all along the horizon line. But I like trees. That's what I did. And I bring down the pigment of black to create foliage and, and different like dips and hills in the land. So that's what I like about this is you don't need a reference image to do this. It's all from your imagination. You can use any palette you want. If you want a bigger piece, you can use the same principle for a painting in acrylics or oil if you wanted to you can have it super big in your house and it translates really well in a big format as well as the smaller format and you created it on your own so that's great I also did a couple more of these that are a little bit different. It's a waterscape. And one of them I added more details. As I was saying, you can add as much detail as you want or leave it very bare. Both are super nice. It's all up to you. That's it, it's that easy. I hope you really liked it. I suggest that you have fun with those. You can use a sketchbook to kind of do small formats and doodle a bunch of them and recreate in a larger format the ones that came out the best. That's at least how I do it. 
this is the way I'm doing it, but there are no rules. As you're doing it, you may discover different things that you really love and create your own magical little recipe. And if you recreate some of them or do your own version of them, please tag me on Instagram. I would really like to see them. It makes me so happy when you tag me. It really makes my day. Speaking of which, shout out to Yara. She recreated one of my tutorials, the Modigliani style portrait. It came out super beautifully. Great job. I was so glad to see that you tagged me. I love it. That's it for me. I hope this was inspiring to you to do your own little landscapes. Please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell for notification. I'll see you in just a couple of days for another one. See you soon. Bye.